Yeah, it's Rap Radar Podcast, Elliot Wilson. This is B-Dot. B-Dot, this is on video, man. Yeah, we on video. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the Young Guns in the uh, No Better Love video, man. <laughs> the Ask Lord movement has finally been answered, man. We uh, This is going to be Rap Radar Podcast. This is a video edition, man. Yes. Special on the Interval Presents YouTube channel. Where are we, B-Dot, man? We, Where are we uh, up to today, man? We are in the great state of Utah talking to the, uh, the most prolific artist in the game, one of the most streamed artists. NBA Ooh. young boy. Oh, y'all boys in there. Young it's his crib. He invited us. Can you believe it? Can't believe Exclusive it. Exclusive conversation, man. Shout out to Billboard. They did that thing, but it's about for him sitting down with the culture and really letting him know the mind state he's into right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited, man. You ready to get in there? I'm excited. I've never been to Utah, man. <laughs> I never met young boy, so this is going to be an exciting experience. I'm it's excited. It's cold, Let's man. It. It's cold. You know, it's young boy. Don't get scared, be that Young boy has a lot of fans, man. They're going to be watching this, man. We got to do a good job, right? All right, well, it's cold out here. Let's go heat up inside, man. Let's do it. Let's get into it, man. Rap Radar Podcast, yeah! Hey, man, we're in Utah for the man himself, man. Young boy, how you doing, sir? I'm cool. Thank, thank you for having us, man. Thank you for coming. Absolutely, man. This is a beautiful place, man. I mean, you know, I feel like, you know, people could say, well, this is a trial and tribulation you got to deal with, but I think you made the best of it. Like, it just feels like this home just feels very, like, you know, warm and just, like, like a dope, a dope place. Like, can you talk mm-hmm. about why this is, like, work, to, work for you is, like, your home right now? It's just peaceful. Not too many people. Ain't too, ain't too much to really get off into. That's a hell of a view right there, too, right there. It's a long way from Avenue J apartments, right? For sure, for sure. (laughs) Word. You said the bill, but like just being out here is like the best thing that ever happened to you, right? You love the serenity and just the peacefulness of it? I love like the weather, too. You like the cold weather? Mm -hmm. Because in BR, where you're from, in Baton Rouge, it doesn't get snow and stuff like that, does it? I don't really like it as much. Like, I ain't really used to it. I just like seeing it. Mm. the difference right Mm. so out of all the places in america you had to choose you chose utah right (laughs) did you feel like was it like an adjustment for you like when you first came out here no because i wasn't really looking to fit in or to to get off into nothing i just wanted somewhere to go far from baton rouge Mm -hmm. do you miss baton rouge a little bit Mm. no as far as music goes like do you how have you been a bit, like, how's the process been different, like, working out here than back home? I don't know. I really just go out the moment that I'm in. I think, I think the music could be better, though, if I was just out moving around, experiencing, experiencing more. Mm. It ain't really about man. I still, it's still the same. <laughs> gotcha. What made you turn it up on your neighbors, man, with that black video it's creating a party out here? I had actually asked the neighbor. I asked one of my neighbors. I should have asked the other one, though. <laughs> it was just some creative that was brought to me. Are the neighbors nicer out here? They cool. I don't bother me. <laughs> but you definitely, like, you just haven't at all ventured out. Like, you pretty much stay on your home base at all times. And the cars yeah. ain't been touched. You got, like, an amazing car collection. They're just sitting in the garage. Yeah. I don't really know how the neighborhood looking and. <laughs> What about, you know, you know, it's like to get here, it's a lot of restrictions, right? But what about your family? Is it, you know, is it easier for them to come see you and visit you and your friends? No, nah, they got to go through the same. Oh, the same procedure? Yeah. Yeah. But you built a whole new foundation, man. You recently got married and, you know, has two, like what, what inspired that to like settle down that way and get married and move in that direction? I always wanted to. And the woman I'm with made me actually want to rush. That's I'm how sorry. it works, brother. That's how it works. You gotta get the right one, man. That's how it <laughs> works, mean. right? Did you do like a like limited with in the home? Did you, did you do like a big kind of ceremony kind of thing, or just kept mm-hmm. it real low key? Low key. You had the kids involved too. Mm-mm. Oh, okay. In a previous interview, I saw um, you did with like Angela Yee. You said that you know you never felt that kind of love, you know, from your grandmother. Did you feel like your partner gave you that, um, filled that void for you? Yeah, I feel like she do a lot for me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that that's because you know obviously you've, you've sort of been real reflective of like the kind of music you make and the content you make and you know your responsibility to that do you think that sort of like having that stability at home is also a factor in that of how you're viewing things right now as you grow like the fact that you know you've talked about you know maybe looking at the violence you've put in the music and making maybe wanting to make some changes with that right do you think that you having a sort of stable home life now with a new wife and, and being in this great position, does that connect to that in a lot of ways and impact you? Yeah, I, I think so. I think it got something to do with it. <laughs> yeah. I really have to be looking at other like young dudes yeah. or like some people I'll be talking to, I'll be like, 
Oh, your ass really bad. <laughs> you bad and I, I'm gonna still talk in the way I talk, but yeah. I think I'm gonna just watch how I do it though. Mm. Yeah. I didn't really have no limit at first. I just, <laughs> really? We didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you, it's you, funny, you, the billboard that you said, a very interesting story, you said pretty much a lot of it was, you know, you know, there's a beautiful picture of your grandma right here in the home. And, you know, we know how important she was to you. And you, you, so you told a story about being in the group home. And then, you know, so you were getting sort of bullied and stuff, you said. And that kind of like unleashed the beast, right? Like that sort of show, you know, a lot of times people that end up moving a certain way is because they've been like impacted, you know, a certain way, right? Like in that, that sort of unleashed a fire inside of you that maybe you didn't even fully know you had, right? Mm-hmm. There's another story though. Do you listen to some of that old material, the, your old stuff? No, not really. Putting out so much new material, I mean, I guess you don't have the time, right? <laughs> it's yeah. also crazy to be the, the dichotomy of like how, you know, soft-spoken you are. And then when you hear those, especially those early records, just how fired up you are in the booth. Like, what, what was those sessions like? Do you think you, that's another side of you that just kind of comes out when it's time to record? I don't know. There's like the things that been on my mind. That's like the mode. That's what I'm feeling. Hmm. This is what I venture off to. Yeah. And last year, man, 2022, you dropped eight albums, yo. That's crazy. I think that's the most you ever released. Like, was that your plan to flood the market like that? Not exactly. I think I had got like to a certain number of tapes I had dropped in, I was just like, I'm going to try to reach 10. Mm. So I just kept going. What was your, what was your mind state with this, that run? You know, you left Atlantic Records, but you went on a crazy run with them for a long time. And it seemed like, you know, people were saying, well, you, you're only obligated to do a certain amount of albums, but you over-delivered, right? You gave them so many projects. Like, can you there's, talk about your mind state with that? That's just me, though. That's like just my work. Mm. It wasn't like a favor. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing just planned. I just dropped music. I, it brings some type of good feeling to put a tape together and just mm-hmm. release it. What made you leave Atlantic and want this new situation here at uh, Motown? I, I left Atlantic because I wanted to experience some more stuff. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, just try something new. Yeah. See if I could get more out of a label situation. Mm-hmm. Motown, it just came about. But that ain't actually just my specific label. Mm-hmm. Like I go, with mm-hmm. each tape I got, I could go anywhere on Universal I want to go and drop. Oh, you oh, can wow. on your projects. Okay. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Wow. That's a, hell of, that's a hell of a deal. <laughs> that's what happens when you, you have the catalog that a young boy has. Right. <laughs> so you wanted that versatility in a sense, I guess, right? Yes. With I rest my case. Even though like subject matter to me, it sounds like the album focuses a lot, a lot of on love, right? And then you got like these skits sandwiched in between like top girls, top haters, the love YB skit. Do you feel like those are real conversations people have when it comes to you and your music? I think so. Really? I think those skits come very close to the conversations. So you like you're tapped in. You you I'm sure you like you follow what's going on online for people saying the streets about YB. Mm-hmm. Like you're not uh, just oblivious to I see a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey now, I do see a lot of shit, bro. But mm. It's a lot I don't see neither because I ain't really. Mm. I see a lot though. Yeah, yeah. you see a lot. <laughs> yeah, I see it. Yeah, you definitely tapped in, man. But you also said that this album, you almost want to challenge, you know, you're not afraid to challenge your audience, right? Like it's a little bit of, of a different sound for you, right? Like I see people talking about raging music and these sort of terms. Like, what do you think of that? Is that Was that your intent with the music this time to be a little different of how you were putting this project together? Just trying to reach a different audience. Mm. My kind of music I make, it, it became easy to me. Mm-hmm. So I used to sit there and do it all day, mm-hmm. all day, literally. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to try something new. When you say that style of music, what do you mean by that? Just to sort of like... The sound my fans know me to have. Yeah. So, but you're not afraid to experiment, like on the rest of my case, because, you know, it's a lot of different, um, a lot of different sounds. Like, it's just a different departure from what people are used to. And you also challenge the aesthetic, like people saying, well, was it face painting or doing your nail, painting your nails and doing these different sort of style things? Like, what is, what's inspired that to do, do those different things too? The nails came after the face. Mm. I was just playing with my face and I actually liked it a little. Mm. You should try it. <laughs> I'm saying, I got to check with the wife, but if she's with it. <laughs> Yeah. But that's the thing too, like you said, you and your, you and um, you and your wife that you're into that sort of the style of it and doing it together and dressing a certain way at times, right? It's not just you yourself, but also in the relationship. Right? Yeah, she be having fun with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you know, it's funny. Like when I was listening to uh, my I got a family, you know, you had that one track, Contrail Talk. And you said, like, you think the rap game is slowly fading away because of fans' expectations, right? Do you still feel that way? I think people expect too much out of this shit. Mm. All entertainment, right, at the end of the day. Right. You know, some people get caught up inside of it and actually get themselves so fucked up. Bro. But it's all entertainment at the end of the day. Mm. Mm. And it's like, you know, they'll have their favorite rapper. And this person fuck around and do something like just show a flaw that he have. Or like, oh, he fake. Mm. So they go to the next rapper. Mm. Then they see the next rapper. This man human too. This nigga got a, some type of flaw too. Mm-hmm. So then they go to the next one. It's, that shit going to get old. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the whole thing going to get phony to me. Do you feel like rap, uh, fans don't have that loyalty to the artists like how they used to back in the day? I try not to really get into it. Because I know how fast it'll change on you. Mm. You know, like, you got your supporters, but like they'll flip on you quick. Like, you do that one wrong thing mm-hmm. and get that bad comment from them, too. <laughs> right. Yeah. But your fans are sticking by you, man. Like, and according to uh, Illuminate, in 2022, you're the third most streamed artist in the United States, right behind, like, Drake and Taylor Swift, man. Like, what do you credit to your success? So much more to be done. I don't really, I don't know how to explain it. Right. I don't really feel like nothing been done. Really? No. Wow. You still feel like you're just never satisfied, right? I ain't never satisfied. Yeah, but it's just a, it's a lot more to be done. Mm. But right. do, do you get any, do you draw any motivation from how much your music does resonate? Like if you did it and the numbers weren't as big, would it, would you still be as motivated? Does the success and the numbers and that know how big you are? Does that continue to motivate you to put out projects? I just be having a, a point to prove, or mm. just be having something to say. Mm. Mm. I just be wanting to vent. <laughs> Man, I wake up. Like, is it like three in the morning or some shit and just recording myself? Mm. Like, it's just therapy. Mm-hmm. Still to this day, it's the same way. Yeah, yeah. it's therapy. It's just something I do. Wow. I remember talking with you for title a little while back and you was, and I was trying to, I was trying to get you to like get competitive and say, you know, is your name in the ring with these people, blah, blah, blah. But I think what's interesting about your success is that you don't look like you're really competing. Like, you've always had your own lane. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not about like, these rapper lists or who's number one, these kind of things, other than the numbers itself. Like, it's something like you take pride in, like, you're not really competing with people. You've kind of carved out your own lane in what you do. Is that fair to say? Yeah. I don't think I could compete. I think I'd lose. Really? I don't know how to play the game. I just go. Yeah. Like, I ain't never really been, like, had no type of structure. And that. I just go. Like, even when it's time to drop. I just pick the songs out and I just go. I don't know, man. The numbers and the stats say yeah. you're, you're hanging out. I'm saying, with but the do, you, do you want that accolade to like of what you said? Like, you you obviously know you've influenced a whole generation and influenced so many other rappers. Like, you know, you'll hear big names like a Drake, a Cole, a Kendrick from another generation. Like, you know, for your generation, do you want your name to be said like, oh, young, I got that from Young Boy or Young Boy was what I was always bumping and what I was listening to? That's what inspired me. I just want, I just want to be paid. <laughs> I don't know, but I think this whole music thing, like every aspect of it, like it's all ignorance. Mm. I just want to be paid. Yeah, like I don't care about all the extra shit. That's how you judge success. It's just with the monetary, with the money. The business. I just want to be business. paid. Yeah. yeah. And stay out the way. Right. How have you gotten those steps? Like, I guess, part of, I guess, moving from Atlantic to Motown and where you're at now, like, what do you think are some of the key things you've done that sort of like put your business in a better place that you that you feel more comfortable and like you feel like you're getting your value in the, out here in terms of what you create? What were some key moves you made to kind of put yourself in a better position? I don't look at it that way neither and I still don't feel like I did neither because it's like no matter what I've, I've gotten from someone like it's somebody like no matter if I got two two dollars it's actually somebody making four of my creation mm. so until i get the business down pack like to where i go like i built my own team like i don't need no labor like mm-hmm. like this whole system is what i built and this is all i need to get everything i want from out of it i'll be cool but i don't feel like i did and then no different so it's your battle to get like more ownership like get your masters and get your Situation like that? No, every dime. <laughs> <laughs> That's B dot's model. Word. That's what's up, bro. I want say, I want every dime that my creation bring. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I want every dime. I remember that freestyle you did over the story of OJ. 
and you said uh, you had a percentage in United Masters. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, so you had like conversations with Steve Stout and. Yeah, I met. I I talked to him before. Oh, okay. I actually don't even understand what's going on with that business right now. Mm. I need to check on it. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing to look after. Make sure, right? Checks and balances. Yeah. You know. You know, young boy, we've been through like the blog era. We've been through like the SoundCloud era. And you know, like you're like the king of YouTube, right? So like, when did you realize like that platform was like the best place for you to get your music out? I think I just realized that recently. Mm. But I always was like, YouTube, you just, you ain't gotta go through no steps to upload it and to get your music out there. You just <laughs> First upload that shit there. It go out right then and now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, say if you got something to say, you ain't got to wait days until this whole situation over with for the throw it out there. Mm-hmm. Nah, you can answer right then and now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And less clearances, too, like you samples. Yeah. And- yeah, YouTube just quicker. It seems like you're not the type of person to hold any music back. Like, is that driving the label crazy? I do got a lot of music I don't <laughs> drop, though. Oh, okay. I do drop a lot of music, too. Mm. I don't really know how the business side of that be going. Mm-hmm. They don't really come at me with it. On the business side too, man, you know, a lot of these artists, you know, make their bread and butter on the road. But, you know, being that you here, you know, you haven't really been hitting the stage, you know, in a while. Like, do you miss that element of of, of the game is performing, touring? It'll be fun to do, but I ain't, I ain't fucked up about it. Do you remember the last show you did? I, I was in Florida somewhere, mm. if I ain't mistaken. Like, how do you even approach a set list? Because you, you have so many records. Like, it's like, you're not, and also that you're not defined by like one record. You know, some artists is like, Oh, we just play that one record we know. That's their hit. Like, you, do you pride yourself on that? That you're not known just for like one record. Like, you just I just go out the previous songs I released. Though, just ask somebody around me mm. and just let it be. Oh, just whatever the current project mm. is. Yeah, like for the show set, I just go after the, the previous songs I released. Mm. Or what I know they gonna want to hear for sure. What are some of those? Like, what's like three essential, from your humble opinion? What's three essential songs from your catalog that you know like are kind of everlasting to your fans that they'd want to hear if they saw you live? Valuable pain. Mm-hmm. Outside the day, or some shit like this. Slime belief. Thirty eight baby. Oh, well, that's sure. my next question. What's <laughs> what's your top three projects? What's your top three projects you think you put out? I think thirty eight baby to top. And mine got a family. Mm. Oh, there you go. With DJ Drama. Yeah, you went with Drama. What made you go to do the Drama the Gangsta Grills thing with that, man? What made you reach out? Oh, I used to just used to Drama voice coming across a lot of tapes, like as a kid or some shit. Mm, yeah. All that shit is like just drilled inside your mind. Right. You get a host for it. <laughs> you ask me who. I was, I'm a Drama. Growing up, you know, you say your mom was always inspiration. You know, she used to rap as well. You had on 38 Baby Part 2. Um, what other rappers did you look up to um, growing up or listen to when you was a kid? I well, like just local artists. Okay. From Baton Rouge, All right. if I ain't mistaken. Speaking on, on the a parental front, though, I know your dad, you know, he's locked up right now. And, um, he has a song dedicated, Hey Pops, on I Rest My Case. Uh, did you play that for him or does he know about that? Or I don't know if he know about it. I ain't play it for him. I ain't play it for him? Mm-hmm. What yeah. inspired you to, to make that song? I'm going off um, comments. Mm. You know, I just like just, just wonder what he think about all this shit. Yeah, like shit that other people are, have something to say about. Like, what he think about? It. Mm. Then it just went from to the studio from now. I like how you opened that record. You said like, "Hey, pop, you proud of me? You feel like you might be proud of you at this point?" Yeah, I think he proud. <laughs> I don't think he got nothing against none of this shit. Mm. I think he proud. I was really proud of that moment that you did on Tyler the Creator's album as well, man. You, sur- you shocked a lot of people on that with that collaboration. For sure. <laughs> what you think shocked them about it? I didn't think people were expecting that you could get busy like that. You know, I think they just saw you in one lane, and then we heard you on Tyler's album. It was like, whoa, okay, NBA. And, you know, Tyler, they fuck with each other. And it was definitely a hit. It was a winner. How did that come together? I really don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because unfortunately, I think when it came out to you, you was locked up. You couldn't be part of the video or stuff like that at the time right i think i just remember meeting them i don't remember how it happened though mm. and i don't think i did that song right then and now like as i met them I, I think that song was sent sent to me but you killed it you killed it man yeah. you also killed it thank with, you with Nicki minaj and i admit it yeah i did a video for that one what was it like working with her it was nice <laughs> <laughs>
He got a couple of those. Word. He got a couple of those with Nick. Yeah. A couple of joints. That's the thing. You don't mess a lot of rappers, but you when you have when you do do the collaborations. I was talking about that with you, with you before. You have a lot of dope features like the Migos needed joint. Yeah. Um, you and Future with the a trillionaire joint. Like a couple of times, like you're very selective, right? Like you don't you don't play nice with a lot of rappers. Like you are very selective of who you work with. But it seemed like when you decide to do it. You know the results are there. You get to getting funny and tricky when you get to working with artists or trying to work with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then you get to getting weird. Do you like vet? Well, who you want to work with? Because I know I'm sure you get asked all the time, right? As far as like to do a song, yeah, yeah. But you can't, man. You can't pay me a million dollars to do no song. Mm. Like it don't work like that. Mm. Mm. You gotta actually feel the artist and feel the get to know the person, right? Yeah, it's like sometimes I just be want to have a conversation first, mm. just to see like what type of man you got. Like, right. Like, are we the same kind or something? Mm. Makes yeah, sense. He was very revealing to a different aspect of that when the billboard. Then when you saying how like you don't you don't necessarily trust people, right? Like you're very, mm. you're very you know protective and guarded in terms of like you know people like you said people can be cruel, right? Everybody may not have the best intentions. Like that must be tough. Then you know the music industry is kind of built on a lot of that, right? Like a lot of that. You know, not, not a lot of good characters out here in, in this space. So does that make it even more challenging to, like, maneuver in this business? I just don't like people, period, though. Mm -hmm. Like, at all. Have you always been this way or just kind of, like, being in this business is just conditioned I, to it? I've always been distant. Oh, okay. And I think this business made it worse. Did you have conversations with um, uh, Takeoff and Quavo? Because you're on the Unconfused Project, too, uh, to the bone, prior to getting on that record. I think Quavo sent me the song. Okay. They came out here to do the video, but mm. I think something happened and it had me in a fucked up mood. Mm. So I had canceled the video. Oh. Uh, I, I regret it though. Oh. Uh, it's okay though. Mm hmm. And it feels like um you have a real good connection with Birdman. You know, you guys done some projects together. Five. <laughs> They're my five. He's a good guy. How, how's your relationship blossomed throughout the years? He just, dude, crazy. Like, um, <laughs> he just talk a lot of shit, and I just like to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> that my fire. I like when he pop that shit, man. Yeah, <laughs> Beatrice. He been on that fucking nigga too. So. <laughs> that dude, was that, that the same type of time. Fuck yeah, yeah. fuck yeah about it for sure. Is it different because, you know, he's from New Orleans and you from BR? Like, is there still, like, a connection or is it, like, a... Yeah. You know, a lot of shit that's, like, go on in BR, you know, a lot of the shit stem from New Orleans. Mm. You know, that's, like, where the real gangsters come from. That's where a lot of shit got bloody at first. Mm. That's kind of, like, where we learned a lot of shit from. Mm. Yeah, it's a connection, though. Yeah. What do you think that is about Louisiana? Like, what is it? what does it breed, like, that, that state? I think Louisiana is... Different, bro. Mm. No matter where you at, a Louisiana nigga gonna stand out. And it's also something in the blood, man. In Louisiana, you guys, you know, you have Master P, you got the Cash Money's, the Birdman's of the world, and you, you even kind of taking up that stance with your crew, the Never Broke Again crew. You guys put the compilation. Talk about those guys and um, what makes them so dope. Shit, what makes them dope? They my brothers. Mm. Like you said, one of them send me a song and I'm listening. That bitch actually press. Yeah, I was like. That's really my brother rapping. He's like, <laughs> I don't think a lot of them want to rap. Mm, mm. I think it's just something that the group into right now. Mm. And that a select few feel like they can make it. Mm. Mm, I think it's just something fun right now that everybody getting into. Right. And it's free money. <laughs> 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 right. That's what podcasting should be, V. Yeah. God damn it. I, I stay telling people like, yeah. Man, you know how fast these people give you like just a million dollars or two hundred thousand wow. dollars just to sign you like man, they giving anybody a, a deal today. Mm. Any and everybody rap. Yeah. So it's just free money. <laughs> Has your relationship with money changed? What you mean? Like I remember one of the songs you talked about how like you spent ten million dollars on taxes. That's like not being educated. Mm. I know what the fuck going on and I spending my money right. <laughs> Just having to double back and pay. Another work record, you say you had like twenty five million before the deal, and you came back and. I'm fine. Playing with a lot of big numbers, yeah. um, young boy. I don't really have nothing to spend money on, mm -hmm. so I don't really spend money like that. Mm. I don't really have nothing I want, uh, you know. 
I don't know. My mindset, I just be wanting to make money so my wife could buy anything she wants. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah, I had my fun. <laughs> He's still young, though, you know? He's no, 23. But, he, but B, you saw he got a financial advisor yes. now. She don't look like she's messing around with, with the young boy's situation, uh, right? I think she'd be on top of it. <laughs> yeah. So does she make you like do like investments and stocks and these kind of things? or? Yeah, she'd be having me off into a lot of this shit, whatever it's supposed to be. Kind of follow her lead with a lot of that stuff or trust her judgment? I mean, I trust nobody. Does Birdman give you like pointers, too, you know, when it comes to financial literacy and things like that? Um, we don't really talk about money. Mm, Birdman doesn't talk about money. <laughs> nah, like we be we be talking about like some shit that we like thinking about putting up, but as far as like just money, mm. like we don't sit there talking about money. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I heard that you guys are working on a movie too, uh, Baller Blocking, Part Two. Mm-hmm. So that's happening. Wow. Did you see the original? Yeah. yeah. You liked it? Oh, hell yeah, boy. That's a classic. <laughs> classic. Come on, classic. You watched it? Classic. Yes. For sure. Absolutely. Did you have to like take acting classes? Like, how was your acting? <laughs> <laughs> That's a no from your boy. <laughs> That's a big shoes to fill, man. Like, you know, from following up with that classic. So. Think so? Hell yeah, man. I think it means a lot, you know, to the world, but specifically to New Orleans and Louisiana. You know, I think that's the you culture. Know, it's yeah. a cultural moment. I'm looking forward to seeing you in it. I'm looking forward to seeing it myself. <laughs> oh, so it's all done? Did it? No. Okay. We it's never started yet. Oh, you started? Okay. And you also starting to stop the violence campaign, man. I like this. I like this direction that you're going in, young boy. Can you talk about that initiative? Yeah, I don't really want to get off into it. Yeah. Man, that shit, I don't know. I don't think it's, it's, just get out of, it's getting out of hand. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of like, Bitch ass niggas <laughs> like starting to have dealings with, with a lot of shit. Yeah. You know how usually sometimes it'd be like two gangsters yeah. like just little at each other neck. Yeah. And I was like, they got like real like bitches that's provoke provoking and like just manipulating people. Like mm-hmm. And I don't like it. I ain't cool. I ain't cool with it. Right. Man, they got like, like just some bitch ass shit going on in the day, bro. <laughs> That shit bullshit, bro. You just ain't feeling it. Yeah, just, <laughs> hey, stop the violence, man. Right. Uh, if you do something, just make sure it got a very good meaning, like, mm. the right reason behind it. Do something with intention. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like people just want to do things for clout, as they say. They got babies, killing babies, man, that shit. Yeah. But they got niggas that's 16 to walk up on you and switch you down. Yeah. That shit backwards. Yeah. But you got to think about it. It's another bitch ass nigga who provoking this young nigga to walk up on you and hit you with this bitch though. Mm. Just cause he ain't he ain't really cut like that himself for to just walk up on you and just spank yeah. you right here. So he gonna tap Yang and he know Yang ain't got no mind. He know Yang from the from the pop in front of everybody. Right. No impressionable. Type of kill. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this shit just backwards. It's like see, I don't even want to see the youth that shit. being taken advantage of in these Yeah, things. man. Yeah. Man, there ain't no gangster shit going on right now, man. A lot of pussy shit. A lot of niggas getting ready to tell on each other, too. So you feel like, like you know, even back home, do you feel like a responsibility to want to help some of those youth back in Baton Rouge? Sure, I want to help the youth anywhere. Anywhere, okay. It's all about the understanding. I think, like, with a lot of the youth, once you, like, just actually see or just get that belief of knowing where you actually can go or just come in contact with and have like I think that's when you just try to see everything clear when did you realize that you started to have this impact on like the youth culture was there a moment specifically that shit just come from somebody saying oh they'll listen to you if you say this <laughs> right it ain't nothing bad to say so I see it mm. I hope they'll listen to me yeah and like you said this isn't like you're trying to clean all every single lyric like you just you're doing the best you can to, but yeah you know, <laughs> but, but more intentional in terms of like you know i guess more like gun violence and things like that that, that type of talk unless it's warranted in a sense right yeah, yeah that conversation with billboard you say you're not going back to who you used to be mm. who was that who was that person i can say a lot about that person <laughs> it just ain't the right person mm. not the right person to be it ain't smart. I don't know. I, it's like, with everything, like, you just accomplished or, like, just been given, like, you'll be a damn fool. 
mm. if you stay the same, like, right, yeah. Then like, if I have to like get off house arrest and like to go back to the north side or something, like, post the video, I got a big ass <laughs> gun on me or something. I did all this to make it from this bitch. I told the guns and did all this shit to make mm. it from right here. Just to come back with all this money and do the same thing. Like, that's like that's hustling backwards. That's right, yeah. You definitely got a, you got your uh, head straight on right, man. Because a lot of people, you know, they go back to this environment where it, it's like you said, hustling backwards. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. I think I heard the next album is Don't Try This At Home. Is that true? Don't Try This At Home? Don't Try This At Home. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna talk crazy on now. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. Yeah, I'm murder, man. I'm gonna talk crazy on now. But I'm letting you know though, don't try this at home. Don't try this. Oh, it's a cautionary. <laughs> yeah, it's all entertainment, bro. <laughs> right. I'm gonna talk my shit and everything I talk. I'm letting you know, don't try this at home. You feel like it's a thin line between like reality and entertainment, and sometimes people don't can't differentiate. <laughs> Entertainment and reality is very different, but I do think some of the entertainers are make their entertainment their reality also. Mm. If I said that right. Nah, you did. You did. Nah, like don't get me wrong too, like a lot of people who you'll see today, oh, that's a hundred percent who they is. Mm. Like I don't I don't doubt it. Like a lot of rappers today, like, man, half of them probably a hundred percent who they is. Mm. But I guarantee you, bro, I'm gonna draw it on. Nah. Mm. Man, it'd be like this, bro. You'll look at all these rappers' videos. You're going to see a gun in his video, right? You mm -hmm. go to the next one, he got a gun in his video, right? Man, you got to dig a little deeper sometime, bro. All right, now look at his mama. Mm -hmm. His mama ain't no gangster, so how the fuck is he a gangster? Mm -hmm. That shit don't be adding up, bro. <laughs> don't try to sit on. Don't try it on. It's, <laughs> our, it's our entertainment. So as far as like the sound of that, you know, is it going to be a departure from where I rest my case is? Is it going to... You say you're talking your shit, but sonically, like... What producers are you working with? Like I ain't pay attention to who did all the beats. Okay. I know D Rock for sure, but I recorded it all by myself. So you engineered by yourself too? Yeah, just sitting up, wow. recording myself. No way to tell I got a f amount of the right amount of songs. Mm. I'm like I'm ready. Is there a wish list of producers that you want to work with? Nobody? Mm. What about like uh maybe other artists? Less features on That's the recent albums too, right? Less features. That's real. That's like that be in the moment too. I be <laughs> want to work with people in the moment. There's some people that I wasn't expecting. Like I saw you and Kalani do the record together. I was like, okay. I think that was cool. You you know you do work well with, with others in the right scenario. So looking forward to that. Before the end of the year, I, I know we got this project. I know you're gonna are you gonna beat yeah, last year? How many years? more? How many more after that? We got eight <laughs> last year. I ain't gonna beat last year. <laughs> <laughs> That's just because I want to. I want to learn how to structure that shit better. Mm. Okay. Just have a plan with each drop. How you feel, man? You gonna be doing more press this year? That's about it. It's gonna be the last one with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel good. Yeah. Um, I appreciate y'all. I was gonna say, does this feel good? Yeah. Yeah, come and talk to me. Absolutely. I think it was super insightful, man. You know, I think it's important. You know, like you said, the impact you have on the game for you to just share your thoughts and what your mentality is. You know, I think it's important. You know, you're a leader out here in the space. I don't wanna be responsible though. Mm. So I don't really want to be the, mod, the role model. You look at more yourself just as an entertainer, just trying to feed your kids. Biggie had that kind of mentality too. Nah, boy, because at one point, man, this really was my life. Mm. Man, whatever you hear come out of my mouth, say that actually went down yesterday or that went down last week, fine. Mm. Yeah. Like, Inside of it and not like, nah, nah, this shit entertainment. Nah. This is mm. what it's finna be. Do you feel blessed that you survived it? Like that? Shit, yeah, man. Mm. Man, I got people that I love to this day, like, who still stay in the hood or who don't know what they finna eat today or who finna wake up and go to work. Like, shit could be so much worse. That's like, I got brothers right now, like, who the world known me to be around. Mm. That nigga probably trying to figure out how you finna get some money before the day end. Like, mm. shit could be way worse. Granted, we're here in Utah, but whenever you are back home, what's it like? The energy, like, do people just run up on you and hands out? They ain't never really seen me. Mm. Probably like, I don't know. No, no. They might have probably see me from Baton Rouge and think they see a ghost or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> or like, so it's like a myth. Yeah, they never really saw me. I ain't never really performed there neither. So it's definitely a demand. Yeah, yeah. Every time I went back there, only thing I can remember right now is this. Shit, what we finna post up at? Mm. All right, let's head up. And just during it, you 
She making sure every call. Yeah. You know that pull on side, you a stick I ain't out that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it really is when you die. What mm. we finna what we finna post up it. Right. And that's that. You're just watching yourself, man. Yeah. Letting time fly by. Yeah. So when you do come back home, whenever you decide to, it'll be a big homecoming. Be, I don't really plan on going. You don't want to. Yeah, I don't plan on going back. Yeah. To visit. <laughs> for a friend or a friend, I don't plan on going back. I mean, it's not too many rappers that's doing it big in Utah, so I think you have a, a whole state a lot. Appreciate you, young boy. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Thank right, you, sir. sir. Rapper Radar Podcast. Yeah. yeah.